the woodland. Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, showing rare courage in the face of disaster. In the air. On horseback. Or in a screaming squad car. Ranger Bill, his mind alert, a ready smile, unswerving, loyal to his mission. And all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. Naughty Pine Mines. <laughs> that's right. Uh, that's what it's called. <laughs> um, Mr. Leverson? I'm sorry, he's in conference at the moment. Oh, just a moment, please. I think he's through. Well, that's about the picture, Randy. I really appreciate this opportunity, Mr. Leverson. That's all right. You proved yourself to be a good man around the mine. We're always looking for good foremen. Now, best of luck in your new job with us. Thanks again. Mr. Leverson? Yes? I have a phone call here for you. Will you take it in your office? Yes, just switch it in there, please. Oh, uh, Randy? Yes, sir? Uh, I knew there was something else I wanted to tell you, but it slipped my mind. Uh, what was it, Mr. Leverson? You'll be heading up the uh, crew down in Tunnel 13. Yeah, that's the one you said, sir. Well, uh, over the weekend, a few of our lab men were down there checking the area, and they said that you're in the middle of a kind of sandy patch. Well, I'm glad to know that. Uh, we'll take it easy, only small blasts. Better not blast today at all. At least not until you've uh, cleared that sandy area. Whatever you say, Mr. Leverson, only... Uh... I guess you know that'll really slow things up down there. Not in the long run, Randy. Well, how do you mean that? Well, I figure it'll be faster in the long run to have the whole crew make it through that area safe and sound. Well, looks that dangerous, huh? You never really know about that kind of thing. Might be as strong as Gibraltar. Then again, <laughs> well, you know. Okay, sold. You don't think I want any accidents on my crew the first day I'm foreman, do you? No, I don't. So go slow. Use only the light power tools. Shouldn't be any trouble at all. You and your men have been around these mines long enough to know what you're doing. Well, better get going. Those crews ought to be forming about now. Tunnel 13 crew over here. Brenner, Compton, Kennedy, Snyder, Morris, Reed, Peterson, Peterson, and Peterson. <laughs> All right, let's head for the lift, men. And uh, don't forget your lunches. We're not coming up till late this afternoon. I never thought I'd see the day. That's the matter. Him, the foreman. Or I should say the new foreman. <laughs> Big deal. Oh, I don't get it. You're new around here, ain't you? Man? That's right. And they started here last week. I worked in the mines in the East for a while. Uh, what's the matter with the foreman? Nah, he ain't no real foreman. Around here, they make a guy a foreman for a week every once in a while. Try him out. That guy is just a flunky with a higher pay rate this week. That's all. Yeah, if he's uh, just a guy like you and me, he ought to be okay to work for. Most of them foremen don't know what it's like to do a good day's work. Then get your hopes up, fella. He ain't like you said, just a guy like you and me, not Randy Williamson. He's something special, at least why he thinks so. Is that right? Yeah, that's right, all right. Will you work with him a little? You'll see what I mean. Well, he better not get smart with me. I'll tell him where to get off faster than he's ever been told before. Yeah, don't be too sure. We're going to Tunnel 13 today, and he's the foreman, you know. <laughs> What's that to me? I've worked in other mines before, and I can work in other mines again. I don't have to take nothing from nobody. Is that how you came out here from the East, Snyder? As a matter of fact, yeah. I had a couple of fights with guys who thought they could tell me what was what. Uh, I don't think you better tangle with Randy. I've seen him do some pretty strong things. I've tangled with bigger guys than him. But well, don't you worry. 
I won't give him no trouble if he don't give me none. How's it going? Now, oh, this is taking all day. Yeah, it sure is. Why don't we just settle it with a little blasting powder? I told you my instructions were to go easy through this area because of its high uh, sand content. Blast through here might start a cave in. In this stuff? Ha <laughs> ha! Why, back east, we didn't look twice at dirt like this. We just blasted right on. One blast would settle the whole thing. One blast might settle more than you think, Snyder. Just keep digging. I wondered where you'd gone. Huh. Maybe you don't get enough sleep at night, Snyder, but this isn't the place to catch up. Well, I thought I'd give it a try anyhow. And this abandoned shaft was just the place, huh? It amazes me how fellas like you find these places almost right away. Fellas like me? What do you mean by a crack like that? Come on, let's get back to work with the others. For all you knew, this tunnel might have been filled with gas. But it wasn't. Now, was it? I suppose this is as good a time as any to tell you, Snyder, that I expect top performance out of every man on this crew. Now, I don't mind you grumbling if you feel you have to, like your friend Morris, but I won't stand for gold bricking. Now, you've had your little try at it. Now you know where we stand. Ah, they told me you were a preacher. But I thought you only preached about religion. I don't know what you've heard, but don't confuse what I just said with a sermon. There's no choice involved in this. It's either shape up or ship out. Now, you listen, Mr. Foreman. I'm not used to people telling me what to do. I don't like it. And I don't listen to it for long. If that's a threat, Snyder, you can keep it to yourself. I don't scare easily. Now, how about getting back to work, huh? Maybe you can get rid of some of that energy in a decent way. Sure. I'll go back to work. But don't forget what I said. You push me too far. And it'll be at your own risk. Lunch would never get here. Seems like we've been down here for ten days. Well, it sure does. It's because that stupid foreman wants to pick along instead of blasting. It takes forever that way. Well, you know what he said about that sandy patch. I guess he just don't want to risk a cave in. Ah, nuts. I looked at this area myself. There's no more sand in this part than anywhere else in the tunnel. Yeah, I saw you looking around. Where'd you go there for a while? Ah, uh, just... Back into one of the old tunnels for a nap. <laughs> really? Yeah, but old head in his hands caught me. Oh? Look at him over there. Oh, <laughs> you mean Randy Williamson. I see what you mean. Yeah. I finally figured out what he's doing when he looks like that. Now, well, what's he doing? He's praying. Praying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, he caught you sleeping, huh? What happened? Now, he tried to throw his weight around a little. I told him to get off. Yeah, did he? Not for a while, anyhow. Well, I figure we're going to have trouble before the day is over. Uh, yeah. Try to sell you on religion yet? <laughs> nope. Maybe he figures I'm too far gone to start. <laughs> yeah. And I sure am glad somebody finally came along that he can't get the best of. Meaning me? Meaning you. <laughs> Some of the other guys and myself sure don't like the way he always has to do things according to the rules. Always holier than thou, you know. And now they made him foreman. Why don't you tangle with him? Ah, I don't know. I suppose we like our jobs. <laughs> know what I mean. You know, back east, when we didn't have too much use for a guy, he usually uh, had some kind of accident down in a tunnel somewhere. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, just say something was to happen to the, to the saint over there. Who'd take over? Guy with the most seniority, I guess. Now, who's that? He can see all the guys from here. Well, 
<laughs> Looks like it'd be me. Wow. Very interesting. Hey, wait a minute. What you got in mind? I don't nah, want any easy, Morris. Just take it easy. Uh, all I wanted to know is who would take over if anything would happen to him. That's all. I'm worried about the work. Yeah, but you said that back east when you didn't like uh, somebody... Just forget what I said about back east. Come on. We'd better finish lunch or he'll be over here calling us loafers and making me mad. <laughs> That's what I heard from Brenner. How long did he say? Since right after lunch. Now, hold it. Here comes the big chief. We'll settle this thing right now. How are you fellas getting along over in this branch? Uh, we got a little question for you. Yeah. Okay. We heard that we're all through that sandy place where we were supposed to go slow. Yeah. Well, that's right. We passed it just a little after lunch. Why? Well, then how come we're still picking our way along? Why don't we get back to blasting? Yeah, why? You men have worked around mines long enough to know that. You have to get far enough away from a dangerous spot before you can blast. Thought you were experienced men. I used to think I was experienced. But you really take the cake. What are you talking about? Yeah. I'll tell you what I'm talking about. You think you're a big man, don't you? Big foreman's pay for a week and all that. Push the other guys around. Now, now, wait a minute. I haven't... Now, you, you wait a minute. Looks to me like you plan on taking as long as possible with this job just to make sure you can get all the extra pay for working down here in Tunnel 13. That's ridiculous. How much we get paid doesn't depend on how fast we go. We'll have to work down here all week anyway. I don't know what's getting into you, Snyder, but you can be sure when we get, up, we get to the top tonight, I'm going to do a little checking on you. Now, how about both of you getting back to work? What's the matter, Mr. Big? Did you trip? I, I tripped all right. And if I'm not mistaken, it was over your pick. Well, accidents will happen, you know. That's right. They will. But that kind of accident had better not happen again. What are you trying to say? That I caused it to happen? I'm just saying that it better not happen again. Now, I've got to get back to the others. Oh! Looks like you tripped again, Mr. Boss. And the way I figure, you just ran out of cheeks to turn. What are you after, Snyder? Oh, look. You look like you got a little cut on your face. Here, let me wipe it off. Ooh. <laughs> you know, boys, I think he likes it down there on the floor. That's the third time. In the last five minutes, he's gotten down there. <laughs> yeah. Just tell me what it is you're after, Snyder. Just tell me. Sure. I'll tell you. I don't like anything I've seen and heard about you. You're the good guy. The one everybody's supposed to look up to. Even the religious bit. Well, I don't look up to nobody. That's why I'm going to keep putting you down there. You think that's a safe way to live, Snyder? Knocking everyone above you down. That's my way. What happens when you get older, Snyder? What happens when you meet somebody who's tougher? How long do you think you can go on? I haven't had any trouble so far. And I don't think I'll have any here. Yeah, but what happens when you get into a situation where you're helpless? Helpless? <laughs> get that, Morris? <laughs> Me, helpless. <laughs> oh, that's right. Ah, that day will never come. That's where you're wrong, Snyder. The day's coming when we'll all be helpless. <laughs> Looks like yours is a ride. I'm talking about the day when we face God and can't do a thing about changing the oh, past. Oh, here we go with the religious bit. I figured it'd come. As soon as you guys get in a corner, you try to talk your way out with religion. Well, that kind of thing doesn't work with me, Mr. Preacher. So you can put your sermons away. I'm going to rip you right in two. That's so? Yeah, that's right. And when I face God, if I ever do, and he reminds me of the day that I beat his little pet to a pulp. Ha <laughs> ha! I laugh myself sick. It's not your lady, but better than that. Eh? What's the matter with you? I thought you didn't like this guy. Well, he ain't really so yeah, bad. Is... I'm just doing you and the other guys a favor. Besides... 
I haven't had a good fight since I came out west. He's pretty strong. Now, let's see how strong. See if you can catch this pickaxe, Mr. Religion. Now, you did. Now, here, try another one. Uh-huh. Now, got your hands nice and full, huh? Good. Now, catch me. Snyder, you, you clubbed him with that pickaxe handle. You are right. He was pretty tough. He ain't moving. Did you kill him? I don't know. Now we better take a look. Nah, he's still breathing. Looks like he's bleeding pretty bad. That's, that's nothing, just a few scratches. Come on, we've got to get back and tell the others that he's had an accident. Looks like you're the boss from here on in. Me? That's right. You'll do things the way I see them, won't you? Sure, sure. I'm the boss. So you see, man, it looks like I'm boss from here on in. I think Randley will be okay, but we better leave him to rest. Snyder here was only scratched up a little in the uh, small slide. So we'll keep right on working with the rest of us. Now, let's show the boss we can move things right along now, anyhow. First thing we're going to do is blast our way down Tunnel B. Hey, didn't Randy say that we wasn't ready to blast yet? Uh, yeah, but uh, he told us we're all set to blast uh, just before the accident. Uh, yeah, he did. So, Peterson... Get all set up at the end of Antennal B there. We'll blast as soon as you're ready. I see, Morris. Told you there wasn't any danger. No cave in. Nobody trapped. That two bit foreman was wrong. And he was wrong about a lot of things. Yeah. I gotta admit, he was right. Oh, Snyder! Snyder, what was that? What happened to the lights? What do you think it was? A cave-in. That's right. A cave-in. Now stop sniveling and get your flashlight working. There. There's the, the Snyder. Look. The main tunnel. Number 13. It's collapsed. We're trapped. That's the only way out of here. Where are the other men? Hey! Hey, men! Where is everyone? Hey! Hey! They must all be under there. Snyder, what are we gonna do? So you see, Bill, we've come a long way since we first took over the old naughty pine mine. I should say so. Your whole setup is very impressive, Bob. Looks like you've reduced danger to a bare minimum. Yeah, too. Now, the only possible danger spot is Tunnel 13. <laughs> if someone were superstitious, he could really make something out of that, huh? Yeah, I guess so. Anyhow, 13's way at the bottom. Men stay down all day because it takes so long to transport them up and down. But even there, there's boss, always a... Boss! Well, what is it, Hook? For the signal... It's trouble. Looks like a cave-in. Tunnel 13. 13? That's where Williamson and his crew are working today. Now, come on, Bill. You mind have dropped in just in time to be some help? How long do you figure the oxygen will hold out? Ah, with only two of us breathing, it should last plenty long enough. If only that cave-in hadn't packed the dirt so tight... My hands are bleeding from trying to scrape a path. Ah, keep digging. It's our only hope. Me? Why don't you dig for a while? You got us into all this. Hey, Morris. Mouth. Morris, I don't want to hear that kind of talk. Now, you just do like I say, and we'll be all right. I ain't so sure. The only reason we're here, and who knows what happened to the others, is because I did what you said. No, Snyder, I don't think we're going to be all right. I think we're... We're dead right now. Shut up. Now, no more talk like that. I'm the one who decides what happens here. Me. 
That's not true, Snyder. Oh, Brandy! That's right, Snyder. You're not the one who decides what happens here. I suppose you are. No, Snyder, I'm not the one either. <laughs> yeah? Who then? I... I think he means God. God? That's right, Snyder. We've all had our chance at being boss around here. Look where it got us. Now, the only one who can really direct things is God himself. We're all helpless. Helpless? Not me. I told you once before I'm not helpless. I can take care of myself. Can you? You can't do it, Snyder. There ain't a thing you can do. For the first time, I, I'm beginning to see what Randy here's been talking about all these days. It's hard to see when everything's going the way you want it to, but no. That's right, Morris. When things are running smoothly, it's a lot easier to believe that you can run your own life. But what happens when the mine caves in? Well, my whole life's been a bunch of cave-ins. No, it's too late. I got just as long as that oxygen holds out, and then... It still isn't too late, Morris. Well, you two shut up. I'm trying to figure a way out. That's wasting time. The only way out of here is through that block tunnel. The only way any of us will make it through there is if someone comes in to get us. You know how hard it is just to get men down here, let alone equipment of any size. I said it wasn't too late, Morris. If you're really interested in being right with God. Well, I... God. What does God have to do with anything down here? He doesn't care about us. You don't know what you're talking about, Snyder. Uh, yeah, I forgot. You're one of God's pets. I suppose he does care about you. I think he probably cares more about you and Morris than he does about me. He knows me, and he knows I know him. That but you... double talk, that's all it is. Come on, Morris, help me dig. I I can't, Snyder. You what? I said I can't. I'm not so sure that all the digging we could do would get us out of here. I gotta know what Randy means. Maybe you ought to listen too, Snyder. We're all in the same boat down here. Now your talking is just using up air that might be put to better use. Like trying to dig out of here. Go on, Randy. It never seemed important before... before now. It's funny, isn't it? We all know that we have to die sooner or later. But it isn't until we're really faced with death that we even give the afterlife any thought. Yeah, I... I guess so. But God has given it some thought. You see, he wants us to spend all of forever with him. No, I wouldn't want me. Not the way I've been. He wouldn't want any of us the way we've been. It only takes one sin to make a sinner. So you see, in one way, Morris, you're the same as everybody else. And God doesn't want anyone. You might as well start digging. It does seem like the right answer, doesn't it? There's not a person in the world that doesn't fall under the title of sinner if it only takes one sin. Well, the Bible even says if you break one commandment, you're guilty of all of them. Yeah, I thought you was going to give us a little hope. Oh, I really am scared to face God. Of course, I would be too. But that's only half the story, Morris. The other half reads, Christ died for our sins. Yeah, you see that written all over, on signs, you know. Right, but you don't often see what it means. Morris, God is no dummy. He knows what we all are. In fact, he knows us better than we know ourselves. He knows if we have a choice of good or bad, we'll take whatever looks like it would be more fun or to our advantage. Whether or not it's good or bad. Well, that's sure the truth with me. There's really only one man who ever chose the right thing every time, even though it finally meant his death. Jesus. That's right. He lived the life that God meant for us to live. God lived in him. And he pleased God with every thought. That's what God had in mind for us. Ah, that's crazy. Nobody could do that. Morris, how long are you got to listen to that stuff? Go on. Ah. Well... Jesus lived this life for more than just an example to us. All the examples in the world couldn't make us clean before God. Yeah, I know. He taught a lot of good things. Oh, even more than that, Morris. You know as well as I do that teaching or rules don't make a lot of difference when we think we can get ahead without them. <laughs> That's why we're here. The whole purpose of Christ's life was to make you, me, anybody, holy and clean before God. And he did make that very thing possible. How? God so loved the world that he made Jesus Christ the one to be punished for the sins of the world. When he was tortured and murdered, he then faced the terrible punishment that should have been yours and mine. He... he did that 
For me? How could he? He didn't even know there was going to be a you. Just before he was crucified, Jesus prayed for his disciples and then for us, you and me. He said, Neither for these only do I pray, but for them also that believe on me through their word. That's anyone today. Believe? That's all? Just believe what you just told me? That's right. And allow God himself to get together with you and clean out those dusty corners. You won't have to look far to find my dirt. And once you've accepted his gift, holiness and righteousness with him, you must set about to live what has happened. Like you do. Well, like I try to. <laughs> Listen to who's talking about living. <laughs> Wake up, little dreamers. We're trapped in a cave-in. Doesn't look like any of us will have to worry about how we live anymore. I see it, Randy. I get what you're saying. Jesus' death rides me with God. And now I have to live like he did to please God. Oh, well, this little meeting is very inspiring, I must say. Well, what good's the whole thing going to do you? You, big preacher, you think you just made a convert, huh? <laughs> well, I say that if there was a chance in a million that he could get out of here, why, Morris had dropped this whole thing faster than you could say Jack Robinson. Why, well, that sounds like... It is. It's Ranger Bill Jefferson. We found them. They're all okay. Well, here it comes, Morris. You and me, we made this whole mess. You gonna be a fancy pants Christian about it and stick around? Or are you gonna do the smart thing and make a run for it with me? You better decide in a hurry. That's the whole story, Mr. Leverson. Your whole story doesn't completely jive with Snyder's story, Morris. What do you say to that, Snyder? I say he's a stupid jerk for spilling the whole thing. And don't bother about firing me, mister. I quit. Snyder, if it wasn't for the fact that I don't even want to smell you around here, I'd make you pay for what you've done. Ah, send me a bill. I'll put it on the stack with all the others. As for you, Morris, taking into consideration all that Randy has told me, I'll keep you on. I'll keep your nose clean. One inkling of trouble from you, and you can go with Snyder. You won't have to worry about me. Well, if what Randy tells me is true, I'm sure I won't. It's just a good thing for both you and Snyder that all the other men were far enough back in the tunnel not to be caught by the slide. You might both be serving time for the rest of your lives. <laughs> well, that's about it anyhow. Huh? What do you mean? Well, the way things turned out, the rest of my life is going to be a serving time. Only it won't be for the state. It'll be for God. Well, boys and girls, I didn't have a lot to do with today's adventure. But that wasn't the important thing. The important thing is that the call of Jesus to come unto me was answered. I hope you know how important it is for your own life. Well, see you next week for more adventure with... Ranger Bill was produced in the radio studios of the Moody Bible Institute in Chicago.